वेलकम टू पठान सर केमिस्ट्री क्लास माई सेल्फ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ए के पठान फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री आदर्श कॉलेज हिंगोली तो डे विल डिस्कस थर्मोडाइनमिक्स पार्ट वन फॉर बी एस सी थर्ड ईयर स्टूडेंट्स बिलोंगिंग टू स्वामी रामानंद तीर्थ मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी नांदेड़ सो इन दिस लेक्चर विल डिस्कस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड डेफिनेशन ऑफ टू न्यू टर्म्स दैट इज वर्क फंक्शन एंड फ्री एनर्जी फंक्शन सो फॉर दैट यू मस्ट नो वट इज द यूज ऑफ स्टडिंग इन ट्रॉपी we know that entropy is a measure of randomness or disorderedness or the chaos of the system okay again entropy is a measure of thermodynamic probability and entropy helps in predicting spontaneous nature of the process or the reaction for that you must know entropy change of the system as well as entropy change of the surrounding and from second law of thermodynamics we know that entropy delta s or change in entropy delta s is equals to q reversible divided by t the q is heat absorbed or emitted evolved at temperature capital t in kelvin now why these two functions work function a and free energy functions g is introduced so to predict the spontaneous nature of the process these two new functions are introduced that means work function a and work free energy function g will help understanding whether the given process is spontaneous or not we know that for uh, determining whether the given process is spontaneous or not entropy change of the system as well as entropy change of the surrounding must be found out simultaneously and it is quite inconvenient to find entropy change of the system as well as entropy change of the surrounding simultaneously therefore these two new functions that is work function a and free energy function g is are introduced Now, as per definition, work function capital A is given as A is equals to U minus T S, where A is work function, U is internal energy, and T S is the waste part of energy or entropy of the system. Again, G is defined as G is equals to H minus T S, where G is free energy function, H is enthalpy, and T S is again waste part of energy, where S is entropy of the system. Okay, so. let us discuss next point that is work function capital a as a state function now we know that work function a is given by equation a is equals to u minus ts now here u internal energy is a state function entropy also a state function therefore the function which depend upon these two is also a state function therefore for initial state we can write a1 is equals to u1 minus t of ts and say it as equation number 1 and for final state of the system at constant temperature the work function a2 is given as u2 minus ts2 now subtracting question number 1 from 2 we get delta a is equals to delta u minus t delta s it is equation number 3 now we know that delta s is equals to q by t therefore q is equals to t into delta s so replace t delta s by q then that equation number 3 becomes delta a is equals to delta u minus q again from first law of thermodynamics that delta u is equals to q plus w or w is equals to delta u minus q now this work may be given may be positive or negative depending upon work done by the system or work done on the system if work is done by the system it is negative therefore here we are taking it as a work done by the system then w becomes minus w so minus w is equals to delta u minus q so we know that delta u minus q is equals to a or delta a therefore comparing equation number 4 and 5 we get delta a is equals to minus w or minus delta a is equals to w so this decrease in work function a gives maximum work that can be done by the system during change that means delta a if change in delta a is negative the system is or the process is spontaneous and if delta a is positive the process is non spontaneous in nature so this new function capital a is called as helmholtz function or helmholtz free energy function now let us discuss another point that is gibbs free energy as a state function the same g is equals to h minus ts and h that is enthalpy and ts that is entropy is a state function so the function which depend upon these two is also a state function therefore for uh, initial state at constant temperature we have g1 is equals to h1 minus ts1 and for final state it is 
system changes from initial state to final state at constant temperature g2 is equals to h2 minus ts2 therefore subtracting equation number 7 from 8 we get g2 minus g1 is equals to h2 minus h1 minus ts2 minus in bracket ts1 now finally reaches to delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s again delta h is a change in enthalpy okay and a change in enthalpy delta h is equals to change in internal energy plus pressure volume type of work that is delta h is equals to delta u plus p delta v so substitute the value of delta h in our equation we get delta g is equals to delta u plus p delta v minus t delta s uh, now see the definition of delta a is equals to delta u minus t delta s therefore instead of we can write delta u minus t delta s delta e okay therefore delta g is equals to delta e plus p delta v again we proved that delta is equals to minus w so delta g is equals to minus w plus p delta v or finally minus delta g is equals to w minus p delta v okay so this decrease in the free energy is equals to work done minus pressure volume type of work so this quantity p delta v is work done by the gas due to expansion against external pressure p and this minus delta g gives maximum work obtainable from the system except due to change in pressure volume type of work okay so this work is called as network and network is equals to w minus p delta v this delta g is a measure of network and if delta g is negative the process is spontaneous and if delta g is positive the process is non spontaneous this function g is called as gibbs function or gibbs free energy this work may be electrical work or chemical work but cannot be pressure volume type of work okay uh, so in the next lecture we'll discuss variation of free energy with temperature and pressure so thank you for watching please like share and subscribe for any issue or any problem comment